In this video, we're going to spend a few minutes thinking about one of the most important taxes in the UK and in many countries, value added tax or VAT. So what is value added tax? Well, it's an ad valorem indirect tax, which is applied on the purchase of many goods and services. So it's a tax on spending. Uh, the initial tax is actually applied to suppliers. The key question then is whether the suppliers pass it on to the consumers. Now, the standard rate of VAT in the UK uh, went up from 17.5% to 20% in 2011 and has stayed at 20% ever since, although there's been a bit of change around the edges for certain products. Indeed, uh, some goods and services are exempt from VAT. So the standard rate is 20%. Uh, the reduced rate is 5%. That applies to some products such as children's car seats, uh, home energy bills. Some debate about whether VAT should have been cut to zero during the energy crisis. Uh, zero rated items have a, a zero percentage rate applied. And that includes most food that you buy in the supermarkets, children's clothes, books and magazines. And from January 2021, a zero rate applied to women's sanitary products. Some goods are exempt currently from VAT. In other words, they're not subject to value-added tax, including things like insurance, finance and credit, education and training. Now, the Labour Party say that if they get elected, they will bring in VAT on school fees, for example. Fundraising events by charities, uh, selling, leasing and letting of commercial land and buildings, they're all exempt at the moment from VAT. So here's the chart showing all the income, the money that comes into the government from VAT. There are about two and a half million registered VAT registered businesses in the UK. Uh, you have to, if your turnover is more than I think about 85, 90,000 pounds a year, then you have to register as a business for VAT purposes. And you can see that it's a big source of revenue, 157 billion in 2021-22. But notice also that when the economy goes into recession, uh, 2009, for example, 2020, when there's less income and spending in the economy, then VAT revenues tend to fall. And this is a part of the cyclical nature of VAT. How do we show VAT on a diagram? Well, of course, it's an ad valorem tax, an ad valorem tax. So that uh, is a percentage tax applied to the supply cost. So here's our initial, initial supply and demand diagram. With VAT, you apply a percentage. And as a result, there is a pivotal change in the supply curve, not the parallel shift. Uh, and as a result, the price will go up from P1 quantity Q1. There's the tax per unit. The higher the price, the greater is the VAT applied. If you think about 20% added to a pound, 20, it's 20p, 20% added to £10, obviously it's £2. So the tax per unit goes up the higher the price. So a tax typically raises the price from P1 to P2. The quantity goes down from Q1 to Q2. Uh, the P3 is important because P2 is the price paid by the consumer. P3 is the price kept by the producer. So that orange area there shows the consumer burden of the tax and the green area shows the producer burden of the tax and as a result, the total area is the tax revenue. Now, is value-added tax regressive? This is a question, an issue that often comes up uh, in discussion. It's an indirect tax. Is it regressive? Meaning, does the burden of VAT fall more heavily on families on lower incomes. That's what we mean by a regressive tax. And the evidence from 2021 is that, broadly speaking, yes, VAT is regressive. The poorest 10%, so the poorest 20% of the population, the people in the bottom or the first quintile, they pay just over 10% of their disposable income uh, in VAT. And that figure drops uh, all the way down till we get to the top Quintile, the richest 20%, who spend uh, just 4% of their disposable income on VAT. So broadly speaking, yes, VAT is regressive, even though there are some exemptions and some zero rating, which uh, um, has a dampening effect. Clearly, if we were to put VAT on things like, who knows, school fees, for example, that would have a slightly more pro progressive effect. And if we were to put VAT on books and magazines and children's clothes and food from the supermarket, that would have a, a regressive effect because of people's spending patterns. 
One of the issues going forward is whether the VAT will be extended. We live now in a uh, uh, the UK government's running a big budget deficit and needs to find new sources of revenue. And we live in a sharing economy. Uh, Airbnb, passenger transport, um, professional services, all this kind of stuff. The sharing economy is increasingly popular amongst consumers, particularly amongst people who want to generate some extra income from spare capacity in terms of their hours and their assets. So UK government's looking at ways of perhaps applying VAT to services provided by the, the gig economy, Airbnb, Uber, Deliveroo, etc. They look to see if that might be a target for VAT in the years to come. Well, hopefully this has been a useful short primer for you on the economics of one of the biggest taxes in the UK, VAT, Value Added Tax. Take care. See you soon.